Hey everyone, it's me, Ryer Appledorn, and this is Boogers the Cat, and we're coming to you from the Turtle Room. I just wanted to quick talk about junkyard projects I've got going on, one of which is this little guy here, which is Ravel's 32 five-window Ford Coupe. Um, and it's coming along quite well. I just finished most of the paint and started some of the basic assembly. I wanted to make it look a little beat up, a little googly eyed, uh, so you can see the front. You know, the headlights aren't necessarily straight, the body's not straight, everything's a little helter skelter, even the wheels are a little bit pigeon toed, and that's all gonna hopefully add to the diorama once I have it finished. Um, this one's got a lot farther to go, and of course, all of the weathering. I like to do things in stages, get a lot of my projects to um, certain points. So the next step for most of my models is going to be the interior, get that locked down, uh, then I'll do the weathering and then eventually get around to the dioramas. Um, it's probably a little slower that way, but it kind of keeps things fresh. That way I'm not starting too many things at once and I'm not uh, hyper-focusing on just one of my projects. So working in stages is really helpful to me. Another one of my projects is uh, Monogram's 124th scale 1956 Chevy Bel Air. Um, Again, this is going to be another junkyard model. I absolutely love these rusty, junky old heaps, and I'm going to make dioramas to go with them that I hope are just as colorful and as eclectic as the models are. This one's just about ready for um, uh, finalists or for the main body assemblies. I was going to get to it today, but I'm just I'm not feeling up to it. I'm kind of having a lazy day. It happens. Anyway, um, it's coming along really nicely. I like um, the Bel Air body lines quite a bit. I think it's a cool looking car. Um, and this one's going to turn out pretty good. I really like the coloration that I've pulled off with the underside of the chassis on this one. I think I'm going to have to build some sort of diorama that lets you see both the top and the bottom uh, at the same time. I think that'll be really um, that'll be really interesting and really effective. And of course this other project which I've been working on for a while now, my um, 55 Bel Air convertible zombie hunter. Um, I put a uh, dust covering on a, a dust coat, uh, which I have seen in um, a guy named QDC. He's a military modeling guy, and I've been watching all his videos. And he's been putting together some. He's got some pretty cool tips and tricks. So I tried some of his um, his dusting technique, and it turned out pretty great. I like uh, how it dulled the paint down, made it a little less in your face, and um, you know it's going to be a, a cool model when all is said and done. I have to get the interior finished, like I said. Um, same for all my models. <laughs> so I was watching some of CT's videos, and he posed a really interesting question, um, and that was, um, what does scale modeling mean to you? And I, I thought that was really interesting, and I wanted to talk about it a bit um, really quickly. Uh, for me, scale modeling is all about um, creating a world or creating a scene. Um, there have been a lot of things uh, in our history. A lot of unique cars, a lot of unique machinery, a lot of unique um, events and creations and things like that that we've all, um, you know, we can see pictures of or we can hear stories about. Um, but even with all those things, um, there are hundreds of thousands of things that are um, created in, in our brains that we just make up. And... Um, so you can see some really fascinating, and, and you can come up with some pretty fascinating things that had never existed before or, you know, were inspired from something that did exist. And that's kind of what modeling to me is all about, is creating um, those things that are in my brain on a, on a physical level. So that's why I use a lot of colors or why I stretch the, spru um, stretch the styrene, make these things like that because I know they never existed in real life, and they probably never will exist in real life, but at least I can create um, an idea of what they might look like. Now, because this mentality, I've actually gotten a lot of flack from fellow modelers. I, um, I started out in the hobby as a model railroader, and so many people didn't like the idea that I wasn't a rivet counter, that I wanted to create stuff based off of my drawings or based off what I thought about. Um, even now, I'm doing ra railroading in um, two and a half inch scale, which is pretty big, and um, I'm doing it my own way, and that drives people 
absolutely crazy. And I get a lot of that in the model car making community as well. Not so much from YouTube, actually not at all from YouTube, but definitely from various forums or um, people that I've talked to in the past. For example, um, kits have mold lines in them. And you can see, I've already painted mine, but that mold line is still there. Um, and a lot of times, yeah, I take it off like most people do. But a lot of times I'll also just leave it. Um, it's To me, model making is just like making art, just like make, painting. And if you look at modernist or impressionist painters, they would leave marks on... Uh, they, 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 they stressed leaving their hand in the work, allowing the materiality of the object to show through, allowing the um, their creative side to show through in their work. That's why you have brush strokes in paintings, because the Impressionists let it happen. And I think, you know, sometimes letting the mold line stay uh, in your model reminds people that they are just models. They're essentially toys. And, um, you know, I like to leave a thumbprint now and again because it shows I'm the person who made it and I don't do that every time and in fact a lot of the time I do take the time to sand out everything and um, make a nice clean body especially if I'm not building a beastie but you know I I'm creating what I want to create and that's the most important thing to model making and so to me I'm creating what's inside my head and, you know, because of that, it's not always relaxing, it's not always fun to build a model, but it's something that I still love doing. It's something that I still get a lot of joy out of, even if it kind of stresses me out at times. And um, I think that's how you know you're making art, and that's how you know you're making good stuff, is when not only are you creating conversations and you can... Um, inspire other people kind of like how the community here does but it's also not um, it also frustrates you at times it's also frust it also frustrates you at times it allows you to kind of get worked up and get frustrated so that's what scale modeling is to me it's about being able to create something that's absolutely new that may never exist in real life and it also you know works you up it, it, it frustrates you um, but then in turn, while frustrating you, it also gets the gears rolling and you're excited to do your next project and get the, you know, the next idea in your head out there into the physical world. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching, and um, yeah, we'll talk to you later. Say goodbye. Go on. Say goodbye. Say goodbye.